Hello, my name is Jupiter Hadley, and today we're doing another version of Jupiter Plays All the Games, this time with Ludum Dari 38. The Ludum Dari is a two part jam and compo, so there's a competition that's stricter, 48 hours, you cannot work in teams, you can't use pre made assets, and there's just a whole bunch of rules that restrict you. And there's also the jam, which is an extra day, you can work in teams, you can use pre made assets, stuff like that. The theme for this Ludum Dari is a small world. There are a lot of entries in this jam, so I'm going to be playing the entries that are put in my spreadsheet. There'll be a link in the description so you can add your game to it and I will play it. I'll be playing all of the entries on there and I'll be writing about my favorites at some point. That'll be up on Game Jolt's Fireside, so keep a lookout. Um, I'll be playing 10 per video for a minute each. Links to the individual games will be in the description so you can check them out. All my info is also in the description so you can check me out and follow me on Twitter and support me on Patreon if you can and stuff like that. So check that out. Thank you very much for watching, liking, and commenting. Next. We're playing Final Front Planetary Defense. I know that this game is a game I played in the last set. Um, these first four games are actually from the last set. There was no commentary on them because my sound recording software kind of died. So I'm just replaying these four games and there'll be a regular 10 in this video, so it'll be 14 total. And the first one is Final Front Planetary Defense. Play. All right, so to buy stuff. The first time I played this, I sort of uh, didn't buy anything at first, which was a bad idea. And then everyone sort of added up. How do, how do we repair these guys? Cause it'd be cool to just repair them. So I'm just gonna go with the more the merrier sort of technique. And you can kind of speed things up as well. I wanna save up for this thing 4K. A thruster. I don't really know what thrusters do. Thrusters light, rotate, uh, rotate the plant, duh. Ooh. See, bad things are starting to happen though. Which means you should probably just buy more stuff. Because you know, if we buy some more stuff, maybe the planet will stay alive. We should move our planet a bit. Mm. Nope, still died. <laughs> Next. So we're playing Having a Bad Time Simulator. This is an online multiplayer game, but it seems to require uh, port forwarding, which I can't really figure out how to do. Uh, I did spend a whole lot of time trying to get it to work between Lewis's and my computer, but we just couldn't. Um, I wish they did have local multiplayer, but it seems to be an interesting world. You can change the character's color, um, each character's color when you're setting up your server. And you can also shoot and die on various bits of environment. Just sadly, I couldn't play with my friends. It is very ambitious and very, very cool that they decided to go with an online multiplayer. Next. We're playing Go Morris Go. This is a uh, local multiplayer, so I'm playing with Lewis. Hello. And we both have Xbox 360 controllers. Awesome. So you can play with up to four people locally, um, either on keyboard or on controllers. Uh, give me the E. So we're playing these really, really cute little cheerleader buddies who do cheerleading with Morse code. They are adorable. And it's not really a race. It's just about doing uh, the Morse code correctly in that time. And then we look so cute and happy. So it's a pretty simple game, especially because it tells us the Morse code, but it's really adorable. I'm glad it does, because I don't think many people know Morse code these days. Yeah, true. Ah, oh, I got electrocuted. You're so much better than me. Haha. <laughs> I like your little winky face. Here, can I just try to do it faster than you? Just let me do this one. Oh, I get a winky face. Whoever does it faster gets a winky face. That's a cute little touch. Next. Let's We're playing this. Germ. All right, let's do this. And this is the last game that I've had to re-record. Oh, yeah. So, basically, it's a shooter where you're killing germs. And there's our first germ. I very much like the models of germs because they look like actual textbooks models. And they also make a little sound before they appear so that you know that they're coming. Yeah, like that. Meow. 
That was a bit harder to kill. They both died to get oh together it looked like. Maybe not actually. Ah, oh, failure. As soon as you get hit by one, you die. Let's Germ. do this. Let's do this. Oh yeah. Eventually you do get more weapons. And I guess get to face all a hundred four hundred and one of these germs. So that's quite a few to get through. Next. We're playing five minutes civilization. Build a civilization to stand the test of a short time. Alright, how to play. The small world not big enough for both the Civ and the Barbarians. Settlers move and create new cities. Your city builds new units. Enemy city destroy these. Your warrior move and destroy. Where enemy kill them. Nuke is more fun. Okay. Let's do... I don't know. Difficulty 2. Start mode. Settler. Sure. Alright, so they built, like... A boat, which scares me. They died. They also died. So, you know, that's good. Alright. Why don't you go over by here? You also build a warrior. Why don't you build a city and then a warrior? Okay, so we victory. Okay, we're fine. We're fine. We're fine. So we can just edit all of these pawns. Perhaps. Right, right. So we need to travel and build a city, probably, and build a warrior and build another warrior. Warrior, defend us. Okay, well, I like how they're sort of taking ships around everywhere. He's just sort of guarding, I suppose. Slowly, slowly killing that. Next. We're playing the Spoiled Prince. I'm gonna hit F8 to use gamepad. Awesome, because they told me to. I'm using an Xbox 360 controller. I like the upbeat music. She is adorable. As a servant to the royal heir, it is your duty to transport the young prince. Pick him up with X. He looks grumpy. Sometimes it's unnecessary to throw the prince. That. Hilarious. Look, Karen Grace, you cannot fly, only glide. Yeah. That's why we have to throw him. He wears. Okay. Not doing very good at this. Alright, that's okay. Here we go. Awesome. I okay, got you. Guessing we can't jump into those red things. I like the little, just the subtle whining. Alright, there's a checkpoint. Ooh. But yeah, I should have thrown him over first. Darn it. Next. We're playing a small jungle genocide. A small fungal genocide, sorry. You. You are the reason this world is so small. Fuck you. I shall enlist a champion to destroy your whole race. This is your home where you spawn. Sadly, you wasted too much time on your 48 hours. A small, okay, decorated place. Okay. Um, I was the small plant to decorate. All right, here's my home. Apartment complex. Don't come back without the good stuff. All right, condo. Let me know when you find those berries. Everyone has so many demands. I need berries. I need stone. You're so gross. Okay. East gate. Quarry. I died. 
Okay, so I think what I need to do is just gain items and then do stuff with them. Okay, well, there's no forest there. Um, so there's a shop, welcome, mouse over items for details, 25 gold, 25 gold. I don't have either of those, I don't have anything. Welcome, do some items, again, don't have money. Drinks, we'll give you bonuses. So there's a lot of details in this game. Um, when we gather items though, it seems that there are bad things attacking us and we don't have enough time. That's a very good start though. Next. We're playing Ragdoll Wars. Okay. This game... Oh, shift to throw. This game did give us some options. If we go back to where we were. Uh, we did, we did get our, our thingy, our sword back because I did throw it. It did have a nice title screen, uh, but yeah. Oh, I threw my sword, let's go get it. Sword. I pick it back up. Alright, good. Whoa. Whoa, he hit me. It's like a way bigger weapon than me. Ooh, my leg went away. This is a pretty funny game, not gonna lie. A lot of this is going to be very luck based. Not at all skill based because I don't have any. Ah, you've died. Darn it. <laughs> Next. We're playing Sea Gazer. Looks like stars to me. Maybe I'm out at sea. Yeah, maybe I'm on a boat. So we can kind of just look around. I'm not quite sure what our goal is. Ah, oh, so maybe we're not in a boat because it feels like we're on a planet. And walking around. Oh, oh wait. Whoa. So there's like some constellations and a very specific star. So those are probably the constellations. And then that grouping might be the very specific star. Maybe. Hmm. The fact that it takes like a couple seconds to load is a bit weird because sometimes I feel like it's not working because it's just a black screen. It's a very interesting way of discovering what the stars mean. Next. We're playing 3D Vector Space Cab. Any button to start. Okay. It does say you can use a controller. Um, though I don't know about that. Yeah, rip game over. Okay. I don't think it's picking up my cursor or uh, my um controller, which is fine. I don't mind. Um how do I fly back up though? So far I'm doing very bad. It said I could like mm, I sort of went up. I can pick up people and bring them to their spots. But I don't know where the spots are. Oh, there we go. Man, I suck so bad. that F like a time? Okay. F. X. F. Hi, person. So you kind of just got to be fast and a bit lucky. Oh, F is fuel. Alright, so it's now fuel that we're racing against. Not necessarily time. So when we float down, we're not running out of fuel. We're just like a weird alien who wants to deliver people to their homes. Alright, so once you get the hang of it, it's a pretty simple game. I like the art style. It's very simplistic, but it's everything that you need to see. This game is run on an emulator, but the developer took the effort to make it very accessible. You don't have to install loads of things or play around with stuff. Next. We're playing Tooth Decay. Alright. 
So we're kind of drilling down into the sugars. It doesn't hurt at all. Yeah, it kind of looks like it does, though, guy. Like, there's a lot of candy in here. Alright, so we're doing pretty good at, like, going further. I'm not sure what would stop us, though. Maybe that guy telling us it doesn't hurt at all. Maybe he's saying, drill less. Because I am drilling quite a lot. Oh, I died. Hmm. Maybe it's because I didn't have candy. Who knows? Let's see if I ignore these little candies and just go down. Yeah, sugar 69, 68. And then you kind of get more from those. Fair enough. Next. We're playing RSV Resourcer. This game Hello, doesn't quite fit on my screen, but... number 108,629. Okay. And welcome to your shift aboard the RSV Resourcer. Thanks. Today you'll be responsible for the mental well-being of five of your peers. Okay. My identifier is entitled underscore AI underscore 1047. All right. And I've been authorized to dedicate no more than one processing unit to assist you in your task. Well, thank you. I've also been authorized to monitor your efficiency and dock your credits accordingly. Sounds Take harsh. The detailed logs of your actions will be made available to the occupant of each pod. Okay. And may cause unintended interactions. Shall we get started? Sure. Begin by clicking on any of the five cryo chambers using your primitive peripheral device. Okay, but it's input, does it work? Okay. Here you can monitor Peter Moore's mental state and create simulated entities using the menu below. Try clicking on one now. Agents require significant CPU but provide the most mental benefit. They expire after a period of time and free up resources. Okay. You can underfind on any unoccupied spot within the mental grid to create it. Constructs mm. provide minimal benefits Have with no overhead and persist until removed by clicking on them within the mental grid. You can click Go within back. the mental grid on any unoccupied spot to place it. Okay, now I need to make sure this guy's doing good. Interaction, have a human. Well, you have managed to max out the processor for this node. Your constructs oh. and agents are now operating in a limited capacity. Well, hopefully they'll be friends anyway. But you need, like... I have a life-size snail. I don't think I have enough CPU. 15. Round human tree. Adult bike. So the thing is, this uh, screen is quite quite a bit bigger than what it is. I want to put down... exceeding your processor resource limits. Your agents and constructs have been reduced in efficiency. Ugh. Not I was once nice. in charge of managing nuclear reactors. Now I manage you. Yeah. I'm just trying to help people, man. That guy's going to die, probably. I can't put down a person. can't put down a snail. can't give you a bike. I can give you a tree and maybe two rocks. Probably just a tree. You're going to die. This guy's doing great, though. This guy got tons of shit. Let give you more stuff. A bike. I gave it. A, I gave him a bike, and I took it away. There you go. What do you want? Probably more than a tree. I mean, I would want more than a tree. Crew member Kevin Smith is beginning to suffer brain damage. You may want to look into that. Ah, there you go, Kevin. Love you, Kevin. <laughs> it's a very interesting game. Next, we're playing Incidental Dimension. All right, an attempt in visualiz visualizing three dimension, take a point, stretch it into a line, cut into a box, wait. Okay. What is this? I have no idea. Oops. Very strange, like 3D world type thing. I don't think I can actually interact with that. Those are locked. 
That's also locked. Button loves door, but button also loves box. Love story. I got caught in the door because I moved to it while it was open. I think we have to somehow move the box onto that. Because it's a full screen game, um, I'm going to have to stop because it didn't work and there's no way to restart it. So I did break it. Um, yeah. I don't. I also don't know how to pull the box. I tried to interact. That didn't quite work. Next. That last game did have really nice graphics as well. Anyway, we're playing Virtualence. All right. Your creature is made up of four different parts: attack, armor, speed, health. Use these blocks to design your creature. If you survive, you can evolve your creature with additional blocks. Blocks adjust in their own kind. All right. So. I don't remember what any of them do. Sure. Alright, game mode. I don't remember what any of them do though. I move quite weirdly. Ah, uh, probably because I have like one side that's way heavier than the other. How does one survive? Ah, objective collect four goo. So I guess that's how. Ah, oh, there's a bunch over there. We can do this. Oh, I see someone else made a bigger, far better ship. I don't even remember what my ship does, so I'm just gonna stay away from them. Wow, they made a really good design. They all can move quite fast. I don't remember, yeah, let's collect negative two goo. Yeah, okay. So yeah, we survived. All right. Species have evolved. Place your new blocks wisely. I don't remember what any of them do. I wish there was still a guide. Oh wait, I can toggle F1. Oh, I wish there was still a guide that told us which ones did what. Collect negative two goo. So we don't have to collect any more goo. We can just try out our different block styles. I like the idea of making our own uh, creatures. Next. <laughs> 